In today's story, we learn about a group that contributed to the creation of the 1960s Motown sound. This group helped pave the way for more Motown acts to come. One of the most influential, talented singer-songwriters ever has served as this group leader. Today's story is all about the miracles. Now, before we get started in today's video, please be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to stay up to date. Now, without further ado, let's cue that intro. This story begins with William Smokey Robinson, Warren Pete Moore, and Wani Wright was 11 years old when they began singing with each other. This trio was influenced by groups like Nolan Strong and the Diabolists and Billy Ward and his Dominoes. When the trio entered high school, they would be joined by two more students, Clarence Dawson and James Grice, to become the Five Chimes. Before she dropped out, Aretha Franklin was classmates of all five members at Northern High School. Following Dawson's departure from the group and Grace Mary's related departure, cousins Emerson, Sonny, and Bobby Rogers had took their place. Now, here's a fascinating fact. You may not be aware, but Smokey and Bobby, they was born in the same hospital, on the same day, in the same year. Ironically, the two didn't meet until they was like 14 years old. The Matadors would become the new group's name once the Roger cousins had joined. And around this period, it was fairly common for groups to have a sister group and the Matter Durettes with Sonny's sister Claudette was a part of this group. Claudette and Smokey, they would begin dating. In 1957, Sonny, he would leave the group to go into the military. Now Claudette, she would fill in for her brother while he was away. And since they was basically a new group, they would change their name once more to the Miracle Tones. In August of 1957, the group they would receive a big break when they were auditioned for Bunswick Records, home of Jackie Wilson, who was a Detroit star at the time. They were going to audition for the label owner, Nat Turnerpool, and producer Alonzo Tucker, along with songwriter Barry Gordy. Now, during the audition, Gordy, he kept his mouth shut. Turnerpool and Tucker, they expressed their displeasure, claiming that there was a knockoff version of the Platters. They will say there couldn't be two groups in America like that with a woman in the group. Now, following the rejection, Gordy, he would follow the group outdoors where he told Smokey that he admired his voice. Then Gordy discovered that Smokey could write, but he needed improvement. The two, they would begin working with each other, which resulted into a creation of a lifelong friendship. Now, the audition didn't go well but it was the beginning of a new life for me. It was, it was a blessing that they turned us down like that, you know, because Barry Gordy, who was writing all of his songs for Jackie Wilson at that time, was at that audition. And he liked a couple of my songs that we sang, because we sang all original songs, thinking that Jackie Wilson's managers would say, oh yeah, they got their own material, let's sign them. You know, they didn't like us because we were too much like the platters, but Barry happened to be at that audition and we sang songs that I had written rather than something that was currently popular. And that caught his attention. And he came outside after we got through being rejected by the managers and started a conversation with me. We wanted to know where he got the song. So it was a God day for me. Gordy, he would assist in the writings of these tracks as well as negotiating distribution deals for the singles. And Records, based out of New York, had issued the group's debut song, which they titled Got a Job. First single comes out, got a job. I was looking at uh, American Bandstand one day. Uh, in fact, the day that the Silhouettes, who were a very popular group at that time, and their, their number one record was probably number one in the world at that time, was Get a Job. Right. And so I saw them singing that and getting a gold record and everything, and the thought came to me, Get a Job. Well, why not write Got a Job? After the initial song was released, the group, they underwent a fourth name change, disregarding the tones and adopting the name The Miracles. 
I mean, were you guys the miracles at that point, or the name change start after? That? Uh, it, the the name change after we recorded the record because before the record came out, the name changed because uh -huh. Barry didn't think that the Matadors was appropriate for Claudette, who, who was in our group, you know. Right. So we put a bunch of names in a hat and pick one out, and I, I just so happens that I put the miracles in there, and picked one out, and it was, it was the miracles. There will also be called five additional songs, including "I Need Some Money." Money. All you think about is money. And I need a change, among others. I need you, baby. Being away. Gordy was being taken advantage of since he was only receiving $3.19 for his successful production. To get around this, Smokey, it would suggest that Gordy should launch his own label. Now, black people at the time, they was very fortunate to even receive a dollar for their labor. Now, Smokey Promise was honored by Gordy, who, on June 7th, 1958, he would launch Tamala Records, and he had signed the Miracles. Now, because Gordy was still arranging distribution arrangements at the time, the group, they debut single under this new label, was distributed by Chess Records. This song was Bad Girl. He's not a bad girl be this song was the label's first song to chart on the pop charts. Now sometime around 1958, the group that gave a performance at the Apollo Theater where they would receive a very poor response. <laughs> I'm laughing because our very first appearance at the Apollo Theater was in 1958. And we're on our way to the show, we get there. First thing that happened is the band did not want to play for us. The band was Ray Charles and his band. He was the band for the entire show. Well, we're having rehearsal and they didn't want to play for us. So it was a lot of back and forth conversation. So Mr. Charles heard the disturbance and he came out, he asked, actually he asked Smokey, which he didn't know it was Smokey, it was just somebody, um, what was wrong? And Smokey said, well, you know, they won't play our music and da 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 And he said, well, come over here, sing it to me. And he called his person over and said, write down what I tell you, you know, as far as the notes and all. So the next thing is, how are we going to go on and off the stage? So we had three from stage left, two from stage right, the band is playing, they're saying, and ladies and gentlemen, the miracles! And we're like, oh, you know, we come, we're running out, get to the middle of the stage, and say, that's it. We just stop the band, and we start clapping for the next 12 bars. This is our routine. <laughs> this is our choreography. We're new, we don't know. I mean, we quickly learned because we saw all the other acts and what they did. But I tell you, when we got on that stage, the, actually the manager of the Apollo Theater called Mr. Gordy and said, uh, I want my money back. Now, Smokey, he realized that they was lacking one crucial component to that group. Smokey, he was greatly impressed by the guitarist for the Prime Mets, Marva Taplin, when he first heard him perform. Donna Ross and Smokey, they was neighbors at the time. So he would give her a deal that she couldn't turn down. In exchange for that guitarist, he offered them an audition with Barry Gordy. When Taplin officially joined the group, this became the group's iconic lineup. Now for the group, the whole year 1960 became a hot start. Another track by the group, Way Over There, was released. And this single became a second big hit in the country. This single was also written by Smokey who based the single on the Osley Brothers song, Shout. Later that year, they would release another single titled, Shop Around. And then she said, just because you become a young man now, it's still something. Now this song was followed up with Who's Loving You, which became one of the group's most well-known tracks. Because of their popularity began to grow so much at this time, they became Motown's first act to ever make a TV appearance on Dick Clark's American Bandstand on December 27, 1960. The group's first two albums was Hi, Real the Miracles and Cooking with the Miracles was released in 1961. Ain't it, baby? You tell me that you love me, but I don't think it's true. Bro, 
Broken Hearted. Broken Hearted. And Everybody Gotta Pay Some Dues was the three big singles from this album. The group encountered some difficulties that same year when Smokey contracted the Asian flu and had to stay in bed for a month putting his wife in charge of the group. Additionally, Claudette and Smokey had some heartbreaking news as they was hoping to start a family but discovered that she had a miscarry as a result of a car crash. In 1962, they would release a third album titled I Try Something New. Now this album had three hit singles with So Good About Goodbye. What's so good about good? I've been good to you. You made a fool out of someone. And I try something new. It reaches the moon. I've got the Moore was drafted into the military and was gone for a few years, but the group maintained his loyalty by keeping him on the payroll during his absence. In 1963, became a very busy year for the group as they released four albums, starting with The Fabulous Miracles, which peaked at 118 on the Billboard 200 charts, with hits like You Really Got a Hold On Me, The next album was The Miracles Recorded Live on Stage, which peaked at 139 on the Billboard Top 200 charts. Follow up by Christmas with the Miracles and The Miracles Doing Mickey's Monkey, which peaked at 113 on the Billboard 200 charts. And this album had two hit singles with Mickey's Monkey. And I Gotta Dance to Keep From Crying. Due to their thrilling performances, the group earned a nickname the Showstoppers in the early 60s. That was also Motown's first act to have Charlie actors choreograph them. Now, Bobby Rogers was the group's best dancer, and it helped that he was already familiar with actors from previous work with him. After very much success with the Miracles actors, he became Motown official in-house choreographer. The Miracles was among the Motown artists that wrote their own songs rather than using those staff writers, which enhanced the group fame. Smokey, he also penned songs for Brenda Holloway, The Temptations, Mary Wells, Marvin Gaye, The Marvelettes, and The Contours. While other members of the group had worked as employees of the label, Smokey rose to the top position of Vice President of Motown around 1964. Now Smokey and Claudette was actively attempting to start a family, but La Claudette, she experienced repeated miscarriages as a result of a demanding traveling life. So, following her six miscarriages, she was withdrew from the road, only supplying background vocals until 1972, when she also did not engage with the groups in tours, photo shoots, or television appearances. Following Claudette's departure from the group activities, the Miracles they would make an appearance on the Tammy Show, which was a historic concert that also included performances by the Rolling Stones, James Brown, and the Famous Flames. The Supremes, Chuck Berry, and Marvin Gaye to mention a few. The group has set the path for several future Motown performers. The Miracles will rise to the top position of Motown's top selling acts after becoming a national sensation. In 1964, their eighth album was released titled I Like It Like That. This album had two big singles, including the self entitled song. That's what love is made of. You take sugar and spice. Sugar and spice. The group name was changed once more that following year to Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. Now around this time, it was very typical for bands to place their star or lead singer name first, considering that the audience was receiving two acts, the group and then the star. The label that was also able to charge more. Going to a Go-Go was the group's debut album under this new name, which peaked at number 8 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 1 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. With five successful songs from this album, starting with Choosy Beggar. Beggars can be choicey, I know. That's what the people say. A suffer title single. My Girl Has Gone.
the tracks of my tears. People say I'm the life of the party And ooh, baby, baby. The group issued another album the following year titled Away We A Go Go, which peaked at number 3 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums Charts and number 41 on the Billboard Top 200 Charts. Whole lot of shaking in my heart. And Come Round Here, I'm The One You Need was two other albums top charted singles. At this point, the group started to earn 100,000 to 200,000 each night playing in nightclubs. That was also raking in big bucks from royalties and investments. The group reputation had grew as a result of their many appearances on varieties of programs, including the Mike Douglas Show, American Bandstand, the Andy Williams Show, and the Ed Sullivan Show, to name a few. By 1969, Smokey decided to take a step back from the group and concentrate on his role as VP and family life due to ongoing changes in the music industry and Motown. Robinson's opinion was altered by the group's hit, Baby Baby Don't Cry. Let him walk on out if he wants to. Robinson would remain with the group for two more years until 1972 where he promised to quit and announced Billy Griffin as his replacement during the six month tour. Claudette, she would formally leave the group once when Smokey left and Marv Toplin, he would follow a year later to work on Smokey and his solo material. Donald, the brother of Billy Griffin, took his position. Now the group will start working on their other common album and team up with Marvin Gaye and Willie Hutch for the album Renaissance. This was the group's first album following the departure of Smokey, which debuted at 176 on the Billboard Top 200 charts and number 33 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. The group released two albums with Columbia Records and five albums with Motown during Billy Griffin's tenure. Now the new group had demonstrated that they could still generate hits without Smokey in songs such as Do It Baby. Nice and easy. Ooh, how you please me. And Love Machine. The group's relationship with Motown around this time had imploded. The group they was in renegotiation with that contract during this time, and Motown was also having contract problems with Stevie Wonder, who at this time offered advice to the group, which they followed, and they ultimately decided to sign with Columbia in 1977. The group would release a single that would put the label on this group's neck as they fear of possible threats from the FBI. This single will be known as Spy for Brotherhood. Now, to avoid any potential repercussions, the record company had withdrew the track everywhere. Pete Moore, Billy Griffin, and Donald Griffin all quit the group around 1978, and following this, the group was briefly disbanded until Ronnie Wright and Bobby Rogers chose to keep the group's name alive in the 80s. Dave Finley and Carl Cotton would take the positions of Moore and Billy Griffin, leaving Donald Griffin position vacant. This version will last for a few years until White retired following the loss of his wife in 1983. Now the original group, they would get back together for Motown 25 that same year. 1993, White and Rogers, they decided to revive the group with Finley and Sidney Justin, who were eventually replaced by Mark Scott, resulting into two different miracle groups. White, he would tragically pass away from leukemia in 1995, leaving the group as a trio until 2001. The group, they would receive a Rhythm and Blues Foundation Pioneer Award in 1997. The group would receive a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2009, and they was inducted into the Vocal Group Hall of Fame in 2001, also being inducted into the Rhythm and Blues Music Hall of Fame in 2015. When Smokey Robinson was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a solo artist in 1987, the group found itself in the middle of some considerable controversy. It wasn't until 25 years later when the group was officially inducted. Now, the Miracles and their music had a global influence, inspiring numerous of performers from many different genres. The Miracles will go down in history as one of Motown's top 10 acts of all time. 